It is that time of year again. The Game Awards are here and we must vote for the Game of the Year. So today, we're going to be going through each of the categories and casting our votes and then seeing which ones end up winning. Let's jump into this, shall we? So first up, we have the Game of the Year votes. We have a Plague Tale Requiem. We have Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Stray and Xenoblade Chronicles 3. So for my vote for game of the year, I've only ever I've only played two of these. <laughs> out of all of these titles that have come out this year, I have only completed Elden Ring and I'm halfway through God of War Ragnarok, but I have got to cast my vote to Elden Ring. It's just phenomenal and the stuff that is done and revolutionized the game industry. This is getting my vote for game of the year. Next one we have is the best game direction. Ooh. Awarded for the outstanding creative vision and innovation in the game direction and design. Ooh. Elden Ring really, oh, really steps it up in terms of an open world. There's nothing like it in the gaming industry at the moment. God of War, its features and stuff really do improve upon the predecessor that is 2018. Horizon Forbidden West, I haven't played it. Uh, Immortality and Stray, I haven't played either, so I can't say anything on them again. I'm gonna have to go in with Elden Ring for this one. Best narrative for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a game. Okay, uh, once again, Mortality, Horizon Forbidden West, and Play Requiem, I haven't played. Elden Ring is not really known for its story, okay? Really hard boss battles, but I've got to go with the emotional story that is God of Boy. That first opening three hours, hoo, 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 baby, that rocks you. Ooh, best art direction for outstanding creative and or technical achievement in an artistic design and animation. So we have Elden Ring, God of War, Horizon Forbidden West, Scorn or Stray. Now, I'm going to have to go with Scorn on this. We played through it when it came out and completed it. That art style was incredible. I know it was a kind of a love pick to HR Geiger, I think, or whatever it's called. But it was so different from what's released nowadays. Yeah, you didn't understand the story, but that was the whole point. They were showing you their art. So I'm going to go vote for score. We have best score and music for outstanding music, inclusive of score, original song, and or licensed soundtrack. Ooh. <laughs> but listening to the soundtrack of Xenoblade Chronicles, I think I'm going to have to cast my vote on this. Even though Elden Ring does have some nutty soundtrack <laughs> design <laughs> while you're taking on some of them bo bosses, I'm going to have to go with Xenoblade Chronicles. The best audio design Call of Duty should not be on there. <laughs> they shouldn't be on there. Ooh. Gran Turismo 7. I really haven't heard the uh, sound design or audio design for that. Elden Ring. I don't think people are really concentrating on the audio in terms of hitting and stuff like that. I think God of War Ragnarok is really where you're going to feel this audio design and accompanying the scenes and everything that you're going and witnessing. So I think I'm going to have to vote God of War Ragnarok for this one. You know, you know the, the, the ones I've already narrowed it down to because I haven't played the other ones. <laughs> but it's, both of them give an incredible performance during Ragnarok. It's just, what do I go with? I think my vote has got to go with Christopher Judge. And also being a Stargate fan as well, I'm... It's old school. We got to go with it. We have Games for Impact, a thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message. Okay, is it bad that I've not played any of these this year? <laughs> I've not played any of them. Oh, and I'm normally into the indie games as well. But I did see a lot of praise coming from As Dusk Falls. So I'm going to have to cast my vote on that one. Best ongoing. Awarded to a game for outstanding development of ongoing content that evolves the player experience over time. Okay, Apex Legends, I know they have their champions every couple of seasons, and they are banging with that. Destiny 2's DLCs have been incredible. They've got a new one coming out in February as well. Final Fantasy XIV and Yoshi P and his team doing insane work with their patch sequels, as, uh, like cycles as well. Fortnite, I think, is at the top of their game in terms of updates and the way that they do events and stuff like that. But they have been a little bit lackluster 
in the last couple of seasons and Genshin Impact and Hoyoverse do an insane job of bringing out content every five to six weeks. Yes, it may not be all voice acted, but the amount of content that you get over that duration is absolutely insane. But I am going to have to go with, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to do it. It's Destiny 2. I'm the... <laughs> Hell no. 14 all day long is the section that I love. The best indie. For outstanding creative and technical achievement in a game made outside the traditional publisher system. We have the Cult of Lamb. We have Neon White. We have Silfu. Now, I see Afro play through this entirely, and it was incredible. It really was. The way that you age through the game with your lives, it was something totally different that I've never seen. Stray, phenomenal game as well. And then Tunic, I have not seen. But by the art style there, it looks really, really cool. But I'm going to have to go with Cult of Lamb. I didn't speak on it first, but that's the one I'm going to go with. The way that you can interact on Twitch with Cult of Lamb and the way that it has like Binding of Isaac and Enter the Gungeon kind of mix into this kind of crazy story that you play as a lamb. We're going to have to go with that one. We next move into the best mobile game for the best game playable on a mobile device. We have Apex Legends Mobile that I didn't even think was. Diablo of Mortal should even be on this list for an awards, okay? That game sinks people's credit cards and it's disgusting what Blizzard do. So that shouldn't even be on there. Genshin Impact I know is a gacha, but it's nowhere as bad as Diablo Immortal is. Marvel, Marvel Snap, I've heard really good things about it, actually, in terms of an actual mobile game. And I might even check it out for myself. And Tower of Fantasy, the devs are kind of bad with the stuff that they've done in stealing assets from other games. I'm going to have to go with Genshin Impact on this one for best mobile game. Ooh, best community support. Recognizing a game for outstanding community support, transparency, and responsiveness. Inconclusive of social media activity and game update patches. I just have to vote it there. <laughs> That's not even a question. Ooh, okay. We have innovation in accessibility. So that is helping people that are not able to play games and stuff like that. Or if you're colorblind and something like that. And this is options that I love within video games. I am going to have to go with The Last of Us. I think Bone Lab is really pushing the VR scene and the way that that they're really pushing it so that's what i'm gonna vote for next best action game but i'm gonna have to go with Silfu here the one of the best action games in terms and also with the aging in the combat as well as a no-brainer cool of duty is just a brain dead thing they released for the last 25 years no innovation so i'm gonna go with Silfu. god of war i uh, yeah it is under action adventure but it is really linear i've played the first horizon and the open world was incredible. So if the second one just build upon the first one, I'm going to have to give it to Horizon for this one. We have the best role-playing game. Why is Final Fantasy XIV not in here? Have they not been to Limsa? Like, what's going on? Pokemon Legends Arceus did really kind of change the formula in Pokemon. And it's something that they're slowly building upon, even with the Scarlet and Violet coming out this year. But Elden Ring... Ro I would... Role-play? Like, would you role-play... In Elden Ring? I know I had my two-finger maiden, but that's about it. I think I'm going to have to go with Pokemon Legend Arceus. For the best game designed primarily around head-to-head -head combat. Ooh. Sifu? Multiverses. The King of Fighters. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> but I think I'm going to have to go with the Wii Sport. That bowling was just too good. I'm just going to have to throw them a cheeky little vote. It's between this... Or F122, because I like sitting and watching Stan stream, as he's a really chill streamer. And he does some F1 races streams sometime, and it's really, really nice. So, I'm going to go with the indie. Next, Call of Duty MW2. I, uh, I like it, I play it. I'm not giving it to that. I am going to give it to Splatoon 3. Oh, okay, all right. Chat, it's time for me to simp, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Lud gets my vote on this one. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. Lud just gets my vote on this. True Lud bud here, okay? Nebelian, uh, it's sad to see that he's left Twitter as well. But much, much love to all the stuff that he's done on the platform. I know he's now left. C Actually, Cutie Mike. Kyle does some incredible things, but he doesn't 
he's always in like Mr. Beast videos. But I've not seen him do his own events and really push the boundaries. A buy would be awesome if he was on the list. A buy should really win this. Uh, Nobru, I don't know who they are. But, ah. Oh. Cutie has done so much. And she always does a load of events. She even done like the cookie thing. But Lud's got his uh, 50 hour thing that's coming out this week as well. Where he's streaming 50 hours in a glass box at DreamHack. Oh. I'm going to have to cast my vote for Cutie. Out of all of these, because I, I've played Vampire Survivors. I don't think it's worth the best debut for an indie game. I think Stray has really pushed the boundaries in terms of indie. Yeah. Next. Oh. <laughs> you, oh no, no. Ben, oh, even, okay, even Sonic was good, though. Cuphead show I haven't watched. I've heard really good stuff about it. Uh, Hollywood, just, nah. Uh... Oh, oh, <laughs> That's like asking me, do I want oxygen or water today? Which one do I want? Oxygen or water? Oxygen or water? The best adaptation, I think I'm going to have to go with Arcane. We've played RE4. We played the original and that was so, so good. Final Fantasy 16 is the main big entry since 2016. I, if I remember correctly, that we've not had a Final Fantasy. Uh... Hogwarts does look phenomenal and I can't wait to pick my actual house to go in and really start role playing getting into it. Starfield is supposed to really push the open world boundaries, but knowing Bethesda recently, probably a bit meh, and I've never played a Zelda game in my life, but I know the anticipation is going to be huge. I think based on personal experience, I think I am going to go with Final Fantasy 16. I think I'm going to have to go with League. It's just so enjoyable to watch on a competitive level. Let's just vote Vakra. Let's go next. I've got to go with Nature. The way that he's made 100 Thieves and what he came from, I'm just going to have to slip him a vote. You know? I don't know who they are. <laughs> who are they? I'm not in this scene. I don't know. Uh, number one gets my vote. Now to finish us off the best esports event, I'm going to have to go with World's Little Nas X song was incredible and there we have it there are my votes for the game awards let me know down below which are yours can't what you have now don't count what you don't